What's up? Hi. I'm good. I know it's been so. Listen, I feel like we just run into each other back to back. It's so nice to talk to you again. Oh, thank you. It's so good to see you. you look, <laughs> like you're glowing and so happy. And thank you. Same to you. Same to you. It's the makeup. <laughs> no, well, same girl. Because I feel it. Listen, but how are you doing? I know we're all in quarantine, so I want to check in with that first. Oh, th thank you. That's so sweet of you to ask. I'm actually doing fine. You know, mm -hmm. um, I'm just lucky to be healthy and safe and um, just do my part and make sure that people are healthy and wear a mask if I go out. And I, I'm, I'm chilling. Like, I've been watching good movies. I've been, like, yes. you know, it's just me and my, my boyfriend and our little dog. So we're just, we're... We're spending good time together and we take it day by day, so. Yeah, no, honestly, I'm enjoying the quarantine, stay at home. You know, I shout mm -hmm. out to all the people who are uh, frontline workers and, and nurses and medical staff, but I am definitely enjoying the time. I wish I could go home, honestly, but it's like, you don't want to risk, you know. Yeah, I totally yeah. Same. Same. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, I do, we have, I have a lot of questions for you. Oh. Um, first, I know, no, I'm, ex I'm super excited. Um, you've been very, very busy. Um, we're going to get into um, some of the roles that you've done, like Black Christmas, and then you have an upcoming um, production, Little Voice. Yeah. So, but before we get into that, though, I do want to um, talk about your message on social media this morning on your Insta yeah. stories. No, like, I'm, I'm very happy that you spoke out. And it's one thing for regular people to talk about it because, you know, they're kind of going through it, through it every day. And you are a regular person, but you do have a celebrity status. Um, how important is it for you as an artist to speak out about these issues? Because a lot of people, especially like with Kaepernick, it was a conversation of whether or not people who are artists and people who, you know, work in those fields, should they speak out or, um, you know, talk about politics, quote unquote. So what made you right. want to express that? Um, you know, I've, I've I felt it in my heart today, you know, um, I'm in Georgia right now and there's no reason for a black man in 2020 to get gunned down because he's taking a jog and he's our age. And, yeah. Um, to senselessly lose someone is unacceptable in 2020. And it does. And the conversations that need to happen about race need to happen, even if yeah. it uncomfortable and just from my experience of you know growing up in different places um I just feel like everybody not not just myself but everybody has an important opinion an important thing to say and I hope I just articulate it well and I think I think that you know from my experience as a as a mixed race girl and I'm in spaces where I can pass or like I have a light skin privilege as they mm -hmm. say and so it's good to be aware of your privilege. It's good to be aware of other people's situations, whether it's you're being discriminated against your sexuality, um, your religion, your, your race, the color of your skin. I mean, that's just something I've always been passionate about. And um, I'm not going to change who I am just because of I'm, I'm lucky enough to have my career be my passion. So I'm not gonna like, I've always, I've always been that way. <laughs> and my mom's like that. Um, you know, my dad is a very loving, open, just amazing guy who's always embraced different cultures. And that's where I stand. <laughs> so that's yeah. a lot, but. <laughs> No, 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 no. I Because like I said, I wanted to delve into it a, a lot because there are a lot of different things that you pointed out in your conversation this morning, um, which again, very, very happy that you that you did that because a lot more people who have your type of platform should speak out. Um, one thing and for the people who don't know uh, who uh, Brittany is talking about, she's talking about Ahmad Arbery, who was gunned down while he was jogging. Um, they have arrested the I believe it's father and son who did this. So they have arrested him. We'll see how that goes. Obviously, we know how things end out a lot of times in those yeah. situations. But um, you actually talked about also on your social media about the white, white protesters and marchers who are upset because they can't go out and do different things. And Georgia now is off of lockdown. Yeah. So what, what have you, have you seen a rapid change? Did you see the rapid change immediately after they? Um, no, I, and honestly, because I've been staying inside. So yeah. I really like, I just see stuff on social media. I've been in my neighborhood and, staying safe and I actually had to take my dog to the vet today to get a little surgery she had a little bump on her lip mm -hmm. and so when I was driving by um it seemed like people I mean it was early in the morning so I, I I think that I've heard that things have changed I heard that restaurants are packed I've heard people 
have been going to parties and yeah that's something I'm sure that things are up and running I just had I've been hunkered down so yeah I've really seen it myself but no absolutely um and one thing I wanted to talk about within your stories is you talked about the first time um seeing a picture of Emmett Till um <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. No, no, I was gonna say, you know, what, what was that experience like? Because you are a young artist. Um, and I know for me, the first time that you do, you hear the story about Emmett Till, you know, it's like, oh, okay, like, it's, it's kind of wrapped into the other stories that you hear about with slavery, civil rights era. Right. But when you actually see that photo of Emmett Till in his casket, it brings about so much emotion. Um, talk about that a little bit and why you wanted to also address that. Because it, it is prevalent, because we're seeing that still happen today. Yeah, right. Yeah, um, I'm sure as you can imagine, like, you know, our parents, um, if you, you know, come from a background, usually, uh, and you have a black parent or black parents, um, you start having these conversations at a young age about injustice and racism. And um, my mom was a reporter. And so she mm. watched the news all the time. She, she covered Capitol Hill and, and, you know, covered presidents and congressmen and senators and she was also a, a reporter for BET for a little bit. Um, and so we we're always watching the news. And it was one day I was eight years old. It was right before I was supposed to go to bed. And I was sitting in her bed and I never heard of this story before. And, um, and then they showed the photograph of him. And I just remember I like pulled the covers over my head and, and screamed and cried. And my mom, my mom explained what happened. And I just don't understand how someone could do that to a little boy. Yeah. It, it, and we all, you know, it, and there's, you know, when you grow up and you start learning these things, like you start learning about slavery in school, like you start, it starts to kind of traumatize you a little bit. Like, mm -hmm. um, yeah, my sister and I were talking about that, how um, it can be traumatizing for kids of color to be learning about racism and there should be sensitivity to that. And, hopefully change and, and open and honest conversation. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and then uh, just a few more things. Yeah. One thing, yeah, no, no, just because I loved every single slide of your oh, stories. Yeah. No, seriously. And in my mind, I'm like, okay, I already have my, you know, my questions that I have for, but then you just, you brought on so many more. And I feel like it is a moment to be able to have those conversations. One thing that stood out to me um, also was your experience being a mixed race um, biracial woman and you refer to yourself often as a black woman but at the same time you let people know for their own understanding and clarity that you are biracial I've had some of my friends who are mixed race they say I'm a mixed race black woman mm -hmm. identity is mm -hmm. yeah identity mm -hmm. is huge within the black community um mm -hmm. what when was the time where you knew that you had to identify yourself or have you ever have you gotten to that that end of your journey um uh, no it's still it's still evolving, you know. Um, when I was a kid, I went to a predominantly black elementary school and I actually had a lot of kids my whole life tell me I wasn't black and that I didn't count. Um, and that was mm. something that really hurt. You know, that's something my sister and I, um, and I, I have a little brother, but my sister and I are close in age and that was something that we did experience. And, um, and so sometimes I felt invalidated or I felt like I couldn't speak out or I couldn't say anything about my experience. And then, you know, if I'm in a, a space where it's predominantly white, um, you know, sometimes- The same thing. You're uncomfortable, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. You feel different and you feel like you're other. And that was kind of my experience. Like, as I got older in middle school, high school, I had a very diverse group of friends, like very diverse, you know, environment. Right. Um, but when I went to college, I went to Pepperdine University and I, I had a wonderful experience, but it was more of a conservative, Christian, wealthy mm -hmm. environment. And so that was something where I was kind of introduced to things that I wasn't exposed to in Arlington, Virginia, where I grew up. Right. Yeah. Um, so it's like, yeah, you know, I, w I was going to say, I love how you stood in, I'm, I'm a black person, but I have lived a privileged life. And I think that that's also a conversation, like an area of blackness and the black experience that we don't often talk about. Just like you said, light skin privilege. It's something that is a new phenomenon or concept, but it's always been there. 
but it right. takes people having a conversation to understand what exactly that means. And right. I'm very happy that, that you did. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. It feels good to be validated. And a lot of biracial girls actually messaged me and said, mm. thank you so much. Um, and I think that really started to open up for me when I did star, because it was the first time I ever played my own race. Like I was actually acknowledged as somebody of black heritage. Yeah. So I was, I'm really happy as I get older to really just embrace who I am. It's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, what were those conversations like with your parents? Did you, you ever express? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, 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 go, go, no, go ahead. Um, I, you know, I never, I guess as I got older, um, I started to figure out things and, you know, I have conversation, conversations with my parents, but we didn't really talk. Like I just felt mm. normal, you know, it was just mom. Yeah. Dad. Like I, I never thought about it until I had to think about it because people had something to say about my parents being two yes. different colors or some, you know, I had something to say about, you know, my relationship or my parents. And it's just like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Right, right, exactly, yeah. exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. It's like a blessing and a curse to not have to deal with it, but at the same time, when you get older, it's it's a part of your life no matter what, especially as a Black person. Yeah, um, sure. One thing that I love that you did was stop, you said stop telling me what my race is. And um, how often do you, so people, did they just not think that you were Black growing up at all? They, really? Like, people just didn't, but then when they stopped, figured out my mom worked for BET, they're like, oh, you're Black. I'm like, oh, right. <laughs> So but, yeah yeah so no, that's, uh, yeah that yeah <laughs> sorry I keep no no I know it's like it's it's difficult we're all at home and we're trying to figure it out like, yeah. <laughs> right these these first world problems um, yeah. um I think it's interesting and I'm very glad that you had also had said um loving black culture is not the same as loving black people essentially that wasn't your exact quote but to that point yeah. Um, what are your conversations like with your non-Black friends about race? And have has it changed over time? Or do you feel like, you know, the concept is starting to stick a little bit more? Um, you know, the, the really cool thing is, you know, most of my friends and I were all on the same page. Um, um, my, you know, my, my really, really close friends, um, my best friend since first grade, her name's Crystal. And She's Puerto Rican. And then my other really, really close best friend is um, her dad's actually from the Czech Republic and her mom's from the States. And, you know, I have, and I have a lot of best close friends, but my, mm -hmm. you know, those mm -hmm. are like my two examples here. And um, we're, we're on the same page. Yeah. You know, we, we, we get it. And then, um, you know, I have some friends who, you know, might have grown up in a more sheltered background, maybe didn't grow up um, around as much diversity. But, People like my friends have been pretty open. The ones yeah. who like when we have conversations about race, you know, I get questions a lot, um, and we talk about. We've had long conversations, long talks, and and all of my friends have been incredibly respectful and and so willing and open to learning. And that's why I, I love I love them too because it's it's you're not going to get anywhere if you don't gently have a just have a conversation. Yeah. And so that's something that's super important. Um, and something I learned from my mom and my dad, like my mom is, my mom's like, sometimes you need to give people room to grow. Mm. I'm so good about that. And so that's, yeah. yeah. No, I told, I totally agree. Okay. So we're off of the, whew, yeah. Part okay. of the, <laughs> yes. <laughs> While it's, and again, it's all needed, but like you said, it, it's, it's a lot. It's very, it's very lot. heavy. It's it is. Lot. It's very, very heavy. But something that also is a lot for people during this time is our birthdays. Gemini season is coming. Ah, I know. I'm like, people are like, you're a Gemini. I'm like, please don't hate me. Oh, uh, no. You know, it's funny because it, it took a little bit of a learning curve for me with Gemini's. At first, I wasn't all y'all on y'all's team. But now I'm like, okay, I understand them. You guys just don't really like air. You guys don't really like to be held down. You just like to do your own thing and, and express yourself. You guys are very expressive people. Super, yeah. super. But that's a great thing. That's Wait, what's I your love sign? That. I'm an Aries. Oh, yes. yes. I love Aries women. I love Aries women. You guys are everything. Oh my gosh. Okay, well then great. We're on the same team now. Because at first I was like, Gemini, they a little crazy. But they now, are. yeah. Okay. But see, and are you, you're June though. You're yeah, not a I'm June, I'm June 2nd and 
my rising is Aquarius and my moon is Sagittarius. So I think Ooh. it kind of like balances me out a little bit. But I was actually supposed to be a Cancer. I was supposed to be born. I was born really early. I was, but I was supposed to be born July seventeenth. So okay, I just wanted to come out early. <laughs> Listen, you had to, had to pop out. Yeah. I'm a, my moon is Sag and my rising is Taurus. No way! Yeah. Yes, yes. yes. That's I know. A, that's a powerhouse right there. I, you know, it's funny because at first I was like, "Ew, I don't know about Taurus. They're boring." But I'm glad that I have a little bit of Earth, so it kind of settles me a little bit. Because mm -hmm. yeah, the too much fire is like a lot. You're not to be messed with. That's yes. what I, that's what I feel from you. Like your Listen. energy, I love it. Listen, I'm you know I. It's like small doses. I know I'm an acquired taste, but at the same time, I'm glad that only so many people can sip. I will say I, that. You know? I but that. yes, I do want to um, quickly touch on Star. Uh, as you know, we actually, I used to cover um, Star. So it was, I mean, such a great show. Such yeah. a great show. And I know you guys are probably like, ah, I don't want to talk about that anymore. Oh, but, no. It's, I, love, I love talking about it. Yeah, no, and for people who don't know, it's on Hulu. So if you want to catch up or watch it for the first time, go watch. It literally so great of a show. Like I was, oh, everybody, I mean, everybody was upset when it ended it. What did you, so did you guys know, like, how were you told that it was going to be canceled? Um, Lee actually called us personally. Um, it was, I was on the, the East Coast. I was with my family in DC and um, I got a call. Oh, it was like two in the morning. My mom's like, it's Lady Angels, it's Lady Angels. I was like, mm -hmm. hello? And he goes, it, we got canceled. And I was like, my stomach just dropped. I was mm -hmm. like, we were not expecting it at all. Like, yeah, it was, it was pretty scary. Yeah. It was like, you know, for all of us, but um, yeah, that's yeah, no. that's know. We it, did it, not know. That's so, and that's, so is the movie still going to happen? I know that there was talks about the movie. Yeah, you know, I think that they're, they're I, I'm not sure, but I mm -hmm. doubt, like, down the line, you know, after the pandemic, maybe something mm -hmm. could be in the works. That's kind of more on, on Lee. Right. But, but I, it, it, I mean, I would love to be reunited with everybody again. I love, like, that cast is, like, my family. Like, we do, we do Zoom calls occasionally. We have, like, little themes. Like, we... Mm. We, we miss each other a lot I, I love like I, I've never been on a set like that in my life and I didn't realize it wasn't normal until mm -hmm. I start like I've done other projects before star but like after I kept trying to recreate it and it just wasn't happening so, yeah like, <laughs> I'm like hey everyone's like hello I'm like cool. right very serious <laughs> do, you, do you do you feel like you come across more serious actors than you do like kind of silly, not and not serious, not silly and as in not serious, but more kind of because I, I mean, even with your with the star cast, you guys are very personable. Very like every time that I see you guys, even if it's at an event or at a carpet, you guys are very lively. Do you mm -hmm. find that that's difficult? Is it difficult to find on a, in a cast when you do a new, a new project? Um, no, it's not difficult to find. Um, I think sometimes there's just like different grooves, like mm -hmm. for film. It's like, it's, it's kind of like summer camp sometimes. Like you find your niche, you've got your people, you're all having this really fun experience together. You're creating art. And mm -hmm. then there are times like people do take it really seriously or maybe feel competitive or, or maybe, you know, just this is my job. This is my work, which it is. But I think right. you can be passionate and remember like, oh my gosh, I'm so blessed and so lucky to be able to do what I love to do and have it and be successful. Like this right. job is rare. So mm -hmm. I think it's important to have a light um, or just, you know, remember that, you know, sets can be tense sometimes. It's like, we're not doing brain surgery, mm -hmm. it's, we're, but, but it's, I take my craft very seriously. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So. And that's why you're booked. So, uh, um, thank you. <laughs> you know, listen, it is what it is. You get those checks being booked. So, and one of your bookings was Black Christmas. What was it like um, changing up and doing a horror film? Oh, it was cool. I never thought that I would want to do a horror film. Um, Get Out changed that for me because I, mm. I realized that the genre of horror actually sometimes has a message. So I thought that was super cool. And then this was, you know, a, it had a feminist intention and I thought that was really cool. And uh, I read the script and the director was super cool, Sophia Tikal. And um, 
and it was just a really interesting process and I've never had anything like it. It was, and you know, star, star has a lot of musicians. Like I was kind of the actor out of, out of mm. who, who's, you know, first love and like first passion is music. So I kind of had to learn and get on the train. And so I felt um, excited to work um, with like be in a space where the director was an actor and we kind of did all these exercises and, and bonding things. And we did that for star too, but um, I was excited to create art with new people. Um, Absolutely. But I missed everybody on star. Yeah, but. no, I feel that. And so now you're on little voice and that's in post-production right now. And that's going to be on Apple TV. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've, I've been kind of quiet about it, but I'm, I'm waiting for, I think they'll probably start showing some trailers soon, but yeah, I, it was right as I was finishing up Black Christmas, I actually auditioned from New Zealand where we were filming uh, for this television show called Little Voice. And, and um, it, they were in New York and I guess they hadn't found their, their, their girl. And it's based off of um, Sarah Bareilles' life as a singer songwriter, or just inspired. And it's a character that reflects her journey as a singer songwriter. And I didn't expect, you know, I never expected my career to go into a music realm, but it's mm -hmm. like God keeps putting me in these, in these jobs where um, I, I get to sing and, and play instruments and do all these things. I'm really excited about this one. I think that um, this is a character where I feel like, I, I usually feel like I play character actors. Like I'm always something drastically different from myself. Mm. And I think that this is the first time I'm actually playing something a little more closer to who I am. Yeah. I did. Absolutely. And I, I know it's super dope because um, Sarah Bareilles, it's going to be based off of one of her, her breakthrough album, which is titled the same thing. And then she's also going to have some original music. Or it, yes. So that's an art. So are you going to be, I'm assuming you're going to be singing as well. Do you have any tracks with her? Um, yeah, well, um, she would sing the track and then I would, would cover right. it. Yeah. So um, I don't have any songs with her, but um there's like little Easter eggs in there. So maybe you might hear a little bit of her voice in something or. Okay. Yeah. So, and she's, she's so awesome. Like she is so genuine. Like it was so weird because like when I first met her, it felt like I was meeting, you know, someone. Right. A home. That, uh, yeah. And mm -hmm. she, and she is, oh, sorry. And then. It, uh oh, oh, there we go. Um, <laughs> Yeah, um, my phone was like, you're low on battery. Um, but then being in the booth with her, um, you know, sometimes I, I couldn't even look at her. I was like, wow, like I'm actually like singing with you right now. This is crazy. Right. <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, no, absolutely. And did you, did, did a lot of the taping happen in New York? Yes, everything happened in New York. And that was from August of last year to November. I was filming. Okay. So I went straight from New Zealand to New York and uh went straight to work um, absolutely and it, it was it was awesome it's my first lead so i'm i'm really excited and we have an amazing cast um mm -hmm. and it's more broadway actors and they're just so talented so okay yeah well, absolutely yeah well no no i'm super excited too because i do love the musical shows so um and also too just to see you kind of go from star to doing that i love seeing you in that element I do have a super random question before we get oh, into sure. the, the audience questions. What is this link in your bio on Instagram? Breadfish? Oh, my God. What, <laughs> what is? I literally was like, okay, I'm going to ask her anyway, just because this is so random. If y'all don't, if y'all go to Brittany's link in her, in her bio on Instagram, <laughs> and it is literally an ongoing video of breadfish. What is this? <laughs> it's literally like a fish and a loaf of bread. I literally, I, sometimes I forget that people can see the stuff. <laughs> I'm like, um, it's just random and funny and stupid. <laughs> and I think like I was in high school and my sister showed me it. Like me and my like close family friend, like we just love those stupid videos. Like, you know, the one with the badgers, like badger, 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 badger. You remember, I don't know. Like I remember I Honey them. Badger. I remember yeah. Honey Badger. That's okay. like my nerd, my nerdy side. There's just me being a nerd and being random and being funny. And that's ex my, even my manager called me is like, what is this breadfish thing on your Instagram? <laughs> it is ridiculous. So I was like, oh, it's just, I don't have any explanation. 
it's just just because it's my bio and I feel like I do what I want no and I feel that I love that and I like I really love you and your friends back and forth on Twitter just on social media because uh, I love you guys' uh, adoration for um Spongebob oh, totally okay. feel that no literally we're the same I love Spongebob like that was that was the pinnacle of my childhood so is it the best it is what's your favorite episode oh my gosh that's really hard I'd say mine is either Doodle Bob or the Krusty Krab Pizza. Oh, the Krusty, yeah, that one's like OG. Um, yeah. I don't know which one's my favorite. I think I love the one where he adopts the clam. Okay. And then, oh. Patrick, and then Patrick's like sitting his ass at home, like <laughs> going to work. Right, right, yeah. right. <laughs> or um, there, I like the ones with the Flying Dutchman. I just love like, mm, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> It's weird, like, I feel like I actually, I don't know if you feel this way, but my sister and I were talking about how we didn't know, like, we, we learned things through Spongebob, like, we learned yes. about photosynthesis, uh, I knew, I figured out what a cornea was, because, mm. because of Spongebob, like, it's so random, but I, yeah. Like, yeah, I, like, I don't, it's so hard to say, I'm, like, literally trying to, like, sense and feel, like, I know. <laughs> there, there's so many great episodes. The Hashling Slasher. Like, there's there's so many. I know. There's so many iconic, like, and people really don't give Spongebob the credit it deserves. Like, it's it's so, so, so good. And I did learn a lot, because I didn't know that sea sponges were actually, like, a thing. Like that's, Right. Right. Yeah, like, it's, no, I totally agree. People people need to give Spongebob their, their well-due respect. Um, oh, okay. Sure. So we're going to get into some of these audience questions. Oh, for um, sure. So we're going to underscore Viva La Jesse underscore says skincare routine. You do have bomb skin. Oh my gosh. That is so kind. Thank you. I, I actually really do struggle with acne. Um, I mm. have struggled with acne for years, adult acne. Um, so there is like, I don't, you could, you can see in my videos, like I have breakouts, but during star, it was actually really, really bad. I had really bad acne. Mm. Okay. Um, and I think it was diet change. I think it was stress. I think it was wearing makeup 15 hours yeah. a day and sweating and dancing. But um, I started using Retin-A recently. And Retin-A really helped me. Um, I kind of have to go a little bit of, above and beyond. But um, also following a really strict diet sometimes really helps. And drinking lots of water. Like, I eat really healthy because I want to feel good. But also, mm -hmm. my skin gets as I've gotten older, like my skin's just gotten really affected by, even if I have like wine, I'll have like cocktails out with my friends and then the next day I'll just get a huge breakout. So I don't know what it is mm. really going on, but um, I appreciate you guys saying like my skin journey has been a lot. So that's really nice of you guys to say that. And so thank you. <laughs> I'm waiting for the day where like, I don't think I've had clear skin genuinely um, in five years. Like my, mm. or almost six, like I was 18 when I started to break out really bad. I was in college. So yeah. Yeah. Well, you're still, you're still a kid. You still got oh, so much thanks. time. Thank like you. it's, yeah. Like, I mean, I'm 27. So, and trust me, like every now and again, mo well, most of mine comes um, during that time of the month. That's when right, like my right, whole, right. you know, and that's just, mm -hmm. you know, how that goes. Mm -hmm. um, Viva I also said, um, how do you love, what do you love the most about singing and acting? Because you do do both. And everybody doesn't do both. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Um, I, I love it. I just, um, I love music. I love, I love singing. Um, I wouldn't, I don't know if I really consider myself like a singer, but people are like, you need to start singing your singer. But um, I, I'm, I feel like acting is my, my first love, but I love telling a story. I love music. Um, I don't know. It's just like, it's something within me that helps me express myself. And I love singing with people. I love harmonies. I just, I, I feel so much um, when, when I act and I feel so much when I sing as, and mm. sometimes when I dance too, I just, I love it. I feel like it's expression. I, I just, I don't know how to describe. I don't, I don't have words for how yeah. it makes me feel, yeah. but it's just a feeling. Absolutely. And then we'll end it with one last question. I think this one's from Viva too. Uh, she said, or no, this is from D D D X's underscore 1901. She says, who is your idol? Oh my gosh. 
Oh, I have a lot of idols. I, I, I love people. Um, <laughs> I love people. Um, I'm trying to think. I mean, I, I, I mean, I can mention one. I, I'm like the only person I can think of right now is like Michelle Obama, but like, hey, I don't, don't want to work her. Like, <laughs> I feel like that's so, like, everybody loves her. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, you, one thing I was thinking about was when they go low, you go high. Yes. And, and she, um, and then I want to watch her documentary on Netflix. Um, but um, I just think she was a prime example of a first lady and she has gone through so much adversity as a black woman and she's the first um, late first, first black lady. Right. And she is the most, you know, she has all these degrees and she was just so classy and tasteful and beautiful. And, and I, I just don't know how she had so much grace when people were so nasty for no, for, for we all know. The right. Right. So it's like, right. You right. Know? Like, I don't know where you're, I don't know. Yeah. No, I agree. I it's she it, and a lot of people don't think about that. A lot of people don't think they think about oh what Obama had to deal with and of course he dealt with a plethora of different things, but Michelle having to be the person that supports him while he's going through everything and raising their children as a black woman, girl. No, that's a great idol cuz I yeah, agree. I think <laughs> she seriously and then I haven't checked out her book but I'm definitely going to do that too and her uh, special. But yeah. yeah. Well, Brittany okay. Thank you so much again. Before you leave, is there anything that we need to look out for? I know we have little voice that's going to be coming up, but anything else? That's that's it. Um, watch out for uh, I don't know <laughs> Corona. Just like don't don't be right. safe. Wear a mask. You're wearing a mask for others, and they're wearing a mask for you. Uh, but yeah, little voice is you know the big thing I'm excited about and worked really hard on it and it's like really near and dear to my heart and thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me and and um I really appreciate it and you look beautiful and stunning oh, so like I can't wait to I can't wait for the day where we can actually like talk in person again but this is yeah a lot I know. Of fun. Yeah. yeah same to you same to you it's all like I said it's always a pleasure talking to y'all and y'all are so sweet and very I can see the moon and the stars in your path so please oh, continue you. to do the, and please keep having using your platform to promote oh. things that matter to you because it, it seriously matters for the people who don't have that platform so um again congratulations yeah. and thank you for talking to where's the buzz tv uh -huh. and I hope you have a a great rest of your day girl you too <laughs> <laughs> see you peace yeah, out yeah. Bye bye